today I'm going to drive from the West Midlands to Northumberland to British Volt's planned Giga plant. Now this is a battery factory they plan to build to make and supply all the electric car batteries that we're going to be needing in the next three decades. That drive is 250 miles and 250 miles back, so 500 miles in total. And I'm going to do it in an electric car, this Tesla. Doesn't seem right to do it in a diesel. So what's that going to be like? Well, there is only one way to find out. British Volt's Giga site will be one of the largest manufacturing footprints in Europe at 95 hectares. I spoke to Professor Colin Heron from Newcastle University, who's coordinating universities working on research and development. Colin has been championing electric cars as long as I have. The government said by 2030 that we can no longer buy uh, petrol or diesel cars and, 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 and vans or even hybrids. So this is really a big deal now, isn't it? It is, and it's... In, in the past, when I first started with this around 2009, electric vehicles were an option. It was a novelty. We've now set deadlines of 2030 and 2035. So effectively, it started. It, it's not stopping. Where When I first started with this, it was an option. It's not now. And this is evidence of that. And potentially the announcement of Nissan's other battery plant just shows it's now happening. Now, if we don't do this, we'll have to buy our batteries from other countries, won't we? We certainly will. We'll have to ship them in at... And it's a bit ironic environmentally to have batteries made in a low-cost country with probably a high carbon footprint, then put them on a ship to come here to build a zero-emission car. And what about the community here? Because it's not just about the post-industrial strategy, it's not about the cars, it's about people as well, isn't it? It's massively about people, and what, what this is offering and what, one good thing about British Ford, what they've said is they want the workforce to be inclusive. This is an old coal mining area, not a battery production area, not a car production area. We've now got to work with the manufacturers in the schools, get the parents to think this is a really good career, encourage children through STEM. Some will go like the traditional route I did, through an apprenticeship, through a college, to a university. Some will just go to university. But from the education sector, we've got to have open arms and say, not only come to us, we've got what you need to get that job. I also talked to Peter Rolton, chairman at British Vault, who claims that this country needs a low carbon battery industry urgently. Now, it's, it, it's important for the region, it's important for, 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 for the UK, but for the car industry, if we don't have a self-sufficient supply of affordable, clean batteries, What's that going to mean? Well, it means, you know, and li literally what was said previously, the cars are going to go to the batteries. They're going to move into other jurisdictions to get closer to that battery supply chain. There's no battery supply chain in the UK worth talking about at the moment. We need to get this factory built up and working. We're looking at Q4 2023. So we're ready. We're ready for that change. We're ready for that evolution. And, you know, um, I think there's something like 14 EV plants, you know, in planning or various yeah. stages yeah. for Europe. Even if every single one is built in the full manufacturing capacity, there is a shortfall predicted by 2030 of 25%. So it's, it's absolutely vital we get this done. And this is an £80 billion UK automotive industry, which is a threat if we don't get this right. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's a key strategic asset we are building now for the United Kingdom. Is it too dramatic to say this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity, Peter? I know I don't think it is. I think it's one of those seismic moments when the world changes. Okay, we've had the uh, we've you know the internal combustion engine. Everyone's life is affected by the internal combustion engine. We've had it for years and years and years. It is coming to an end. It's the end of the age of the internal combustion engine. It is a new dawn, it is electric vehicles, it is renewable energy to power them, and it's the end of fossil fuels as well in both powering and the manufacturing and process. This is no longer niche, this is no longer on the margins, this is mainstream. Absolutely mainstream. No, this, this, it's not the, the, the idea of the 
niche EV is gone now. Yeah. And what yeah. we will see again more and more with families as well is they will be all EV and the EV will stop being the second or third car to pop down the station but in. The main it's one. going to be the yeah. main yeah. family vehicle going forward. One of the great things about this site is we've got fantastic access to renewable energy. We've got offshore wind. We've got the North Sea interconnector there with lots of hydropower coming over. We can put 28 megawatts of solar just on the roof of the factory. We want to produce the low slash zero carbon battery. We want to bring our supply chain close to us and have a fully vertically integrated supply chain produce a low carbon battery because the other thing that we think is going to happen now is as we move away from carbon emissions on tailpipes of vehicles obviously EV has no tailpipe it's going to be all about the carbon in the manufacturing process of the vehicle so getting that zero carbon battery has become very important to us. Time to head home 250 miles down the A1M and M1 to the West Midlands maybe a little top-up charge and a light lunch on the way. So here we are approaching home and the trip computer has changed to 500 miles so what was that 500 miles like in an electric car well i'm really surprised how okay i feel i, I don't feel fried i don't feel tired the charging was simple and civilized there's some voodoo going on with this car with the light and the filtered air and the fact it is so quiet so you don't feel so kind of wasted so I'm so surprised how good I feel that for my next trip I'm gonna go to France stay tuned <laughs>